Sound waves are measured in sound pressure level, SPL. However, this is a large scale, which makes it impractical to work with when testing the hearing of humans. Therefore, the dBHL scale was designed. A mathematical correction is applied to the SPL graph to obtain a measurement in dBHL. This dBHL graph allows for an easier interpretation of the hearing thresholds. So the further away from zero you move down the scale, the more severe the hearing loss would be. The result of a hearing test is plotted into this graph called a hearing curve, or an audiogram. On the audiogram, you find the lower frequencies, or bass sounds, to the left of the graph and the higher frequencies, or treble sounds, to the right. The severity of the hearing loss is read vertically. On the top of the graph, you have a level of 0 dB HL, which is very soft. At the bottom, you have 120 dB HL, which is extremely loud. If you hear sounds between the range of minus 10 dB HL, to plus 20 dBHL, your hearing is within normal limits. Hearing levels below minus 10 dBHL are inaudible to the human ear. The deviation of the hearing threshold from what is considered normal hearing is called the hearing loss. All sounds above the recorded hearing thresholds are inaudible to the client. For each ear, Individual hearing thresholds are plotted onto the graph. To read the different results of the graph, an easy symbol and color difference is used. The thresholds for the right ear are indicated by red circles, and for the left ear, by blue crosses. Let's visit a clinic and see how a hearing test is conducted. Please be aware the practices and methods may vary between clinics. You will meet Hasmita, who is a hearing care professional, and Robert, her client, who has a moderate hearing loss. It is Robert's initial fitting. Robert has brought his wife, Mary. It's a good idea that the client brings a spouse or children or another close relative. They have great insight into the client's lifestyle and situations where the client's hearing is challenged. Often, a significant other brings valuable information to the dialogue that the client may not have considered. Before any hearing test is conducted, the hearing care professional engages in a dialogue with the client in order to know as much as possible about the client's background regarding communication challenges, and hearing needs. This provides a holistic picture of the client's listening needs and other factors that may contribute to how the client perceives sounds. It also indicates if any specific considerations should be taken into account when performing the hearing test. An example could be if the client experiences tinnitus. If this is the case, the sound of the tinnitus could disturb the hearing test and the hearing care professional will need to take this into account before testing the client. Before beginning the hearing test, the hearing care professional will perform otoscopy by using an otoscope to look into the ear canal. This is to ensure that the ear canal is free from any obstructions in the outer ear. For example, excessive earwax could prevent a true image of the client's hearing ability. The otoscopy will also disclose any medical conditions that could require consulting a doctor. In many clinics, the hearing test takes place in a sound booth, which is a special acoustically treated room built to exclude the most powerful sounds from the surroundings. This ensures that the measurements can be considered fairly precise. 
After the client is comfortable in the enclosed sound booth, the hearing care professional will ask the client if he or she hears better in one of the ears. The hearing care professional will explain how the test is conducted and instruct the client to press the button every time a sound is heard, both for loud as well as soft sounds. If the client can see the hearing care professional during the test, there is a risk that he or she will pick up visual cues from the facial expressions or body language instead of relying on what they actually can hear. Therefore, the hearing care professional will ask the client to look away during the test. The hearing care professional places the headset carefully over the ears and checks that it is placed correctly. It is important that the hearing care professional can see the client during the entire test. The hearing care professional will speak to the client through the headset to re-instruct the client regarding the test and to indicate that the test will begin. The hearing care professional uses an audiometer to conduct the test. The audiometer delivers tones of varying frequency and levels. The sound levels are increased and decreased following a specific procedure. The client responds by pressing the button when a sound is heard. The procedure is repeated until the softest sound the client can hear is determined. This is considered the client's hearing threshold. The results of the hearing test are recorded either electronically or on paper. When a headset is used for the test, the sound must travel from the outer ear through the ear canal via the eardrum to the middle ear and into the inner ear. However, there may be an obstruction in the middle ear, which prevents sound waves from reaching the inner ear. To make sure there is no such obstruction, it is a good idea to perform bone conduction audiometry. This allows the hearing threshold to be determined independently of how the middle ear functions. A bone conductor is a vibrator that is placed behind the ear. The sounds from the bone conductor are transmitted through the cranium and activate the inner ear directly, bypassing the middle ear. The hearing ability is measured a second time using the bone conductor and the results are registered. If there is a sizable difference between the results of the two tests, it indicates a middle ear condition. In such cases, the client should be referred to a doctor to rule out any medical conditions before hearing instruments are considered. Another hearing test that is used is speech audiometry. It can determine a client's ability of understanding speech in quiet and noisy backgrounds. For this purpose, recorded or live speech is played through the audiometer for the client to repeat. In addition to these basic tests, the hearing care professional can choose to conduct other types of hearing tests should they be needed. For instance, measuring the air pressure and the mobility of the middle ear. After the hearing test, the hearing care professional will present the results to the client. These results are shown on what is called an audiogram. The audiogram provides the hearing care professional with an understanding of the client's hearing ability. This is a good starting point for discussing hearing solutions and treatment plans available. This concludes the course, How Hearing is Measured. Thank you for your time.